Hey everybody, it's Board Game Blogger, set to do another review. This time it's the epic game Britannia. It's uh, definitely an American style game, simulates the uh, historical invasions of Great Britain from the Roman invasion up to William the Conqueror in 1066. If you're a Euro only player, listen no further, you're probably not going to like this game. It's one of the one of the better American games, very heavy theme, you know, simulating all the invasions. Uh, there can be a lot of luck that really swings the game because there, there's a lot of dice rolling for all the battles and you can't really anticipate how the battles are going to turn out. So um, the game can be hurt by luck. I think that's half the fun. Uh, the game's for three to five players, but it really only plays best with just four players. And uh, it's, it's a great game. If you don't like luck, you know, uh, go to some other game. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a pricier game. It's uh, by Fantasy Flight, uh, it's a, which is a remake of the, the older version. Um, components are nice. Uh, there's a, been a few sort of misprints with a few of the units, you know, one side's infantry, one side's cavalry. And uh, instead of both sides being cavalry on, on, a, on a few uh, units. But generally, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's a very fun game. It's, it's a long game. It's about four to five hours, depending on how experienced the players are. So that can be an issue. If you can never give up that kind of time uh, to game, that's, then you probably don't want to play it. Also, it's not a game you want to play late at night. You know, you really want to have started it in the late afternoon and just run it late. You know, if you're starting at 10, you know, if that's the only time you can play board games to start at 10 at night, you know, you got a couple hours, this game's not for you. It's a long game and uh, it's fun. You know, it's one of those games I don't mind losing. I don't even mind losing by a lot because it's, it's, it's a still fun journey getting there. It's, it's the process. And there can definitely be a, a lot of trash talking. Uh, there's a lot of gang up on, on the leader and on the perceived leader. And that, that can be a slight issue in this game because uh, the races are set differently. Uh, and so that can definitely be an issue. So initially the yellow player who controls the Romans initially usually jumps out to a big point advantage. And to someone who's uh, new to the game, they might perceive them to be the leader even though they're only sort of relatively in good shape because the other races get better nations later on in the game. And so it's really up to the Roman player to maximize their, their point value. So uh, that, that can be an issue. You know, if you've got three experienced players and one, one noob who, who's playing, that can be an issue. You know, because the, the noob might be ganging up on the yellow player because they think, oh look, they've got the most victory points, they're in the lead. But it, it's asymmetrical. All the races are, are sort of different. And it makes for a, a fun game. It's a very good simulation of, I think, the uh, historical invasions. And uh, some people might think it's a little too good of a historical simulation in that it forces you to do certain things. Well, it doesn't really force you, but it uh, heavily incentivizes you. Because the, the different races have different uh, goals that give them variable victory points. So if you do something that's totally ahistorical, you know, you might only get two victory points for holding a county in Britain, whereas you know if you went for a more historical thing, you'd get four or five. But that, that's not to say that you're completely locked into doing the things, because by going for that two-point thing, you might be depriving some other uh, tribe who they would have gotten six points from holding that. So, I mean, you can still do a bunch of things, but it does incentivize a more historical play but you can definitely diff, uh, deviate from that, and you're not completely handicapped if you deviate from a uh, historical play. So there's a lot of dice rolling. Uh, it's fun. Um, I think you can get playing the game much quicker than some of the other epic uh, American games. For instance, Axes and Allies, that's a great game, but it, there's a long, long setup time. You know, it takes a long time to set the game up. Britannia, you can really set the game up and be playing in like 10 minutes, you know, even less. You know, whereas Axes and Allies, you know, if you're playing Axes and Allies Anniversary Edition, 
you got to like dedicate a full like 45 minutes to just set up the board and distribute everyone's money and, and everything. So that's an advantage to this game that I like is it's an epic American game, long game, four to five hours, but you can play it, that is you can get playing it very quickly. You know, it's five, ten minutes and you're ev everyone's playing, especially if they already know what they're doing. I mean, if you have to explain the rules, that's a different story. But if everyone already knows what they're doing, the setup is very, very quick. So why don't we take a closer look at the board and see how it's played.